Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this Lunch Hour Sew Along with Kimber Bell. My name is Kim Christofferson, and I'm really excited to share with you um, over this uh, period of three days uh, this week, some tips and tricks and things that will make sewing the Candy Cane Lane Bench Pillow successful for you. Um, one of the things I want to show in particular, of course, is using our background quilting designs, how to use them, whether you have a large hoop or even the smallest of hoops, uh, you can still do this project with them. Uh, you will need at least a five by seven hoop to do it. Now in front of me, I have the candy cane lane bench pillow, but I actually don't have it in the pillow form because I wanted to show how it would look even as a darling wall hanging or a table runner. So think about that as you're making this. Do you want to make it as a bench pillow? Do you want to make it as a table runner? Do you want to make it as a wall hanging or all kinds of other ideas I'm sure that you have. So isn't that fun? You can see it's all lit up with the lights going across it. You might not be able to see that too well here. Oh, there we go. We got the lights going on and it just is as sweet as can be, isn't it? Everyone will just ooh and ah for sure. All right, so today's lesson is going to be about the background quilting. And in particular, we're gonna be talking about the house blocks. And once I teach you this technique for doing the house block, you're gonna be able to do all of them with no problems at all, all right? So I'm gonna set that aside for right now real quick i wanted to show you that uh many quilt shops out there are selling the candy lane cane lane bench pillow fabric kit in this fun collectible box check that out you'll also want the uh coordinating embellishment kit it has your lights your glitter your foam all kinds of things to make uh this really simple all right now the other thing you'll want to do is print out your instructions when you have a chance um or view them on your screen, but I like to print them out so that I can take notes on them. And uh, so that is exactly what I've done here. Uh, the PDF is found on uh, the USB in your uh, in your package. All right. Um, now, once I've got that, it's time to get all my materials gathered and ready. In the instructions, you're going to find that uh, we give some tips on page two on, you know, how we organize our blocks uh, in little resealable bags. So be sure to do that. It's going to make things a little bit easier for you. Uh, we also have something that I absolutely love, and that is these cutting instructions. Let's go ahead and go to this camera here. So you can see all the fabrics that we used and then how to actually cut uh, those pieces as well. All right. So it's a little blown out with the light there. Perfect. There we go. So you you won't miss a cut. Um, everything's explained there for you, including all the pieces on how we cut those in the embellishment kit as well. So check that out. All right. So the question is this. You have a five by seven hoop, and you certainly could make this pillow with a five by seven, uh, meaning that all of the house blocks that you see on this pillow can be made in a five by seven hoop. What comes into question though, is when you want to do background quilting on that block and you don't have a larger size hoop. Well, I've got some um, ideas for you today. The first thing I'm actually going to show you though is how I made this block, this one in particular. Let's go ahead and get a close up of this. This is the Red House block. You're going to find it on page 12, I believe, in your instructions. Okay, so let's take a look. Well, maybe not 12, maybe it's a little bit later. Here we go. It's actually page 14 in your instructions. This is the block that we're going to start with today. All right. Um, the very first thing I'm going to do is actually show you how I made this with a little bit larger size of a hoop so that I could do the background quilting and then the house sits on top of it. As you'll notice, the house also has been lowered on the block so that when we go to sew our pieces together and we have the quarter inch right there, then this house will appear like it is sitting in the snow instead of floating, okay? So let me show you what I mean by that. I actually printed out 
some uh, diagrams to help us with this. For example, I've written on here, we've got the six by eight inch block. Actually, you know what, Andrew, I think I'm gonna go to the overhead camera. That's gonna make it a little bit easier to see. All right, so here I printed out, can we make that any darker and more up close? So this is just looking a little brighter. Oh, okay. Let's bring it closer. Let's bring it a little bit closer. There we go. All right. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Go ahead and move this. There we go. Okay. Notice if this was my full, well, it is, I printed it up full scale. So we have a six by eight, what we would call a block by block design, because we are going to do these quilt blocks one at a time, and then we're going to sew them all together in the end. All right. Let's go ahead and move this. There we go. All right. So there is my background quilting. Okay. This is as if I did this on my machine. But the issue comes when we want to actually put the house on top of it. Now, where did my house go? I just, oh, here we go. <laughs> okay. So this is the house design, right? And if I wanted to pull this design in to go on top of my background quilting, it would look like this. I'm going to put it right smack in the center of the block. All right. And while that does look good and it looks fine, absolutely, it actually also looks like that, that block is floating in the middle of the air, right? It looks like that house is floating and we want that house to land at the bottom because the snow is down here and that's where we want it to sit. So certainly you could do it smack in the middle and your block, uh, your house would still look so cute on top of that quilting even if it was smack in the center. But our goal today and what I'm gonna show you is how to shift that down so and where to shift it down so that it lies in the snow, okay? So let's take a look at a couple of things that are important to, to remember. If I'm looking at this design, right, I've got two outer uh, squares that you see in kind of an orange color, right? The one, the line I want that house to sit on top of, I'm going to highlight in yellow right here. This is what we would call the fabric tack down line. Okay, it's the innermost line. See, there's still an outer line. This is the innermost line. The fabric tack down line is where we want this, fab this house to land. So when I go to put it on my computer, I'm going to shift, 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 shift some more, shift some more, shift, shift. There we go. It lands right on top of that, um, what we would call the fabric tack down line. All right. So the reason why there's a quarter inch between these two, well, take a look at this. There's that quarter inch right there. And that is because that becomes our seam. Do you see how that's going to lay nicely on the bottom of your block and not, not floating in the air? All right, so how do we achieve that? Here's what it looks like when it's all together. All right, so we've got our background quilting and then we've got our house on top. I moved it down and it lands right on that line, that inner line. Okay, so what does that all mean? And how do I do it? And how do I know what to do? Let's let's look at your instructions. If you will turn with me to page 16, I believe. There we go. Whenever you want to find out like what background quilting design you want to use for this and what size you need, um, always go to the trimming instructions in your in your instructions, right? So on page 16 are the trimming instructions very at the very top. Let's get a close up of that. Okay. 
Notice this, this is at the top of 16, it says trimming instructions. It says square the finished block to six and a half by eight and a half inches with the house a quarter inch above the bottom inner edge of the ruler. Okay, we're not gonna worry about that right now. What I care about is this number. What I'm squaring the finished block to. I am squaring it to six and a half by eight and a half inches. All right, so now think about this. You've downloaded the background quilting design on Kimberbell.com, and in that download, you will also have instructions for how to do background quilting. I'm gonna show you today uh, visually here on video, but those instructions are also included in your download. So I'm go I, print I went ahead and printed that out, and I'm going to look at, remember I said trimming instructions was six and a half by eight and a half. I'm gonna flip my uh, paper here to go to the instructions that come with your download file, okay? This comes on every download file for background quilting. And what you do is you find the chart and you find the column that says trim size, okay? So remember what the trim size was? It was six and a half by eight and a half inches. So that means I'm gonna go down, down, down till I see six and a half by eight and a half inches, right? Can we get any closer on that? There we go. Wonderful. Okay. So then if that trim size is six and a half by eight and a half inches, I have figured everything else out. I know what size to cut my fabric. I know what size to cut my batting. I know what the finished block size is going to be. And I know the file name. The file name is right here. That means I'm going to pull up the six by eight inch design, all right? And the reason for that being is that we want it uh, to, to uh, we account for the, the seam allowance in there. So what the name of the block is, what the finished size of the block is. In this case, it'd be six by eight. All right, so I've done all that. Now I'm ready for the fun. <laughs> so, I'm going to go ahead and go back to page 14 where I'm at the red house block. I'm ready to make it. And again, this technique I'm gonna show you is going to work for the red house, the blue house, the town house, the tan house, the tree, the cocoa stand, and even the, the little night, uh, the night lights or the city lights. Yeah, that. <laughs> The lamppost, that's the word I'm looking for. Okay, so all of this is going to work now that you know this one technique, all right? The first thing I'm gonna show you on the machine is actually how I did this with a, uh, a hoop size that would fit the background quilting. So in this case, I am using a seven by 11 hoop and um, I am using a, a Kimberbell's lightweight cutaway stabilizer. All right, there's our slap band because I've already opened the package. All right, now you've got to somehow combine these designs, right? And you want to combine, let me show it again here. You want to combine two files together. You want to combine your background file with your applique file and somehow they've got to merge together one on top of the other, right? Well, there's a few ways you can do that. If you have embroidery software, it's very simple to do. You'd bring both designs in and then you would put the house on top of the, the background quilting, right? And then shift the house down. So you remember that line? It was the fabric tack down line. That's where you're shifting it down to. If your machine, and most machines will have this feature, if your machine has a feature where, where you can like load a design and then hit add, um, many times you can do it right on the machine, even if you don't have software. So you can add your design on top of that, shift it down, and then you're good to go. All right, you can, you can certainly do it that way. If your machine does not have that capability and you don't have software, no worries, I've still got you covered uh, because I'm gonna show you in a different technique how we do that. So stay with me. Now, 
if you are sitting there going, well, that's really nice if I had a larger hoop, but I only have a five by seven hoop. Again, stay with me because at the end of this video, I'm going to uh, let you know that we're going to talk about how clear blue tiles can help you still get that background quilting design, even if you have a smaller hoop. All right. So it's all still very possible, no matter what type of machine you have. Okay. I have already combined my designs. Let's go ahead and take a look here on the machine. And I actually did this right on the machine itself. Um, I also done it in software. Can we get a view? I'm not sure how well we can, maybe I can shift this a little bit. There we go. Can you see my screen here? I actually have the background quilting pulled up and I have my little house sitting on top and I've already shifted that house block to sit on the line, on the bottom line, okay? Or the inner bottom line, all right? What I showed uh, with the yellow highlighter. The first thing I wanna do is actually, I've got my stabilizer here. I'm going to stitch an outline so I know where to place my batting. All right, while I did this in white thread, you, you really can't see it right now, but there is an outline of a square of a rectangle, and that tells me where to place my batting. The batting is an oversized piece of our Kimberbell fabric batting, and I'm just gonna lay it over the top and then put my foot down and go ahead and stitch uh, the next step, which is called the batting tack down line. Now, while that's stitching out, let's go ahead and go to this camera. While that's stitching out, I wanted to let you know that we'll be doing the house today and I will go through the first few steps with you. We won't go through every single step because it's outlined very well in your instructions. Uh, but I'm also going to show you some tips for making that candy cane um, in a little bit as well. So stick with me here uh, while we do that. All right. Okay, so that is doing what we call the batting tack down line so that the batting doesn't shift. It's cool. The machine is going to stop here in just a minute. And when it does, I'm going to trim away the extra batting. All right. Okay. If you are looking at your instructions on page 14, you might be thinking, wait a minute, <laughs> she's, I'm not sure where she's at. She's not following those instructions. Well, those are, those instructions are there so that if you were doing this without background quilting, you would follow those instructions. But since we are adding in the background quilting, what I'm showing right now is how to do that with the house on top. And you can also download exactly what I'm showing um, in the, the quilting background file that's, that's available separately, okay? So I've cut away the extra batting that was around it. Now what's going to stitch out is what we would call a fabric placement line. So let's go ahead and stitch that. That is going to stitch around the outer edge of uh, the batting. What I'm stitching, let me show you here again with a paper while that's stitching out. Okay, I've got my, um, my printout of the six by eight. What's stitching right now is this outer line, okay? 
that's what's stitching. Don't forget, down here is where our batting landed. This is what it's stitching right now. Okay. All right. Now, now that we have this outer edge, I'll show you. Let's go up here again. I should have probably done that in a different color thread, right? What I did is this, I won't use the marker for it, but I'm pointing this out. There is an outer stitch line around there. It looks like a just a bigger box. That is where, um, that's telling me where my fabric's gonna go, okay? So let's go ahead and place our background piece of fabric on top of that. One thing to note is I actually have already fused our Kimberbell fusible backing to the back of my background block. And I'll talk about that here in a minute while that's stitching out, but that's already been uh, fused to it. And now we can do the tack down line for the fabric. Okay, let's go ahead and go to this camera. Grab the batting here, here we go. This is what, uh, the batting that I used, and I forgot to bring my backing, not to be confused with each other, right? This is the Kimberbell Project batting, okay? And this is the the soft stuff, right? It's the, it's the batting that goes in between the layers of fabric so that it has a quilted look. Um, project batting. Now, we also have a Kimberbell fusible backing <laughs> that that's what I mentioned I fused on the back of this background fabric and what that does is it eliminates puckering so you're gonna love that okay there we go now what I have is the the tack down line for the fabric that means that fabric's not going to shift it's not going to go anywhere and that's important to have if I were to feel this fabric right along this line here, I would feel that there's no batting in that seam. That's exactly what we want. We don't, for block by block quilting, we don't want batting in the seam and that's why we cut it away. The next step is actually to do the background quilting. So I'm going to do that in white here and I just want it a nice little subtle look, but there it goes. Okay, now let's take a look while that's quilting at this one. I did it in pink so that you could see it a lot better. Okay, so here it is. I've got, I've got my um, everything that I just did and what's happening right now on that background block. I've already done again. Um, but this time I did it in pink so that you could really see the cuteness of this. And doesn't that background quilt quilting fit perfectly with the idea of candy cane lane? I think it is so stinking adorable. All right. Again, I mentioned that if I were to place my hand, my finger right along here, I would feel like, oh, yeah, there's no, uh, there's no batting in that seam line. That's fantastic. That's exactly what you want. All right. Okay. So there we go. Now I'm going to show you here in just a minute that even if you didn't have, um, you know, if you didn't have uh, software to combine the designs or you didn't have a feature on your machine to add to the designs, you could pull up the background quilting first, do the whole thing, and then pull up the house and put it on top. And I'll show you how to do that part here in just a minute. All right. So I'm going to take a look here if there's any questions. Uh, let's see. Cindy says, can you explain the layout of the fabric such as 
10 and a half by eight and a half before the quilting. Okay, so Cindy, what's happening is that you're cutting your fabric larger because the process of quilting the design and also adding applique to it, and there's a lot of applique on top of that, will sometimes shrink those, those fibers, uh, those threads in, and then your block doesn't end up the size you need. So what we do is we start oversized. We keep it eight and a half by 10 and a half. Okay, it'll show you uh, in the... Um, instructions and you just keep it that size and then after all everything's quilted and done that's when you'll trim it down to size all right hopefully that helps all right uh let's see barbara says if you add if you add the snow glitter to the bottom of the blocks would you need to lower your designs or keep them centered that is a great question barbara i'm glad you asked um in this particular design uh, because you have the layer of snow along the bottom, here's what she's referring to right here, you really have some wiggle room with this particular design. So you still want to lower it uh, for sure because um, the, the, digi the digitizers have actually elongated those houses a little bit so that it tucks really nicely underneath the snow drifts. But um, still it needs to be lowered because if it wasn't lowered and you still have the snow going across, your house might still kind of float in some of those areas, okay? And it's gonna look like this, the house is kind of just hovering right above the snow. So still lower your design um, if you want it to sit down in the snow. Now this same technique that I just showed you is also going to be the technique you would use if you're doing something like Twilight Boulevard where it had a row of houses on there and you needed to move it down to the lower part of the block. That's this technique is the exact same one you would do there. Um, also Main Street Celebration. Those houses needed to be lowered onto the block. So that's why um, uh, this technique would work for that project as well. All right. Okay. So now what has happened is we have our background quilting. Again, I did this in white because I just wanted it to be a little more subtle. You can see the same design here in pink and um, it, they are both gonna be just as beautiful, right? Okay, now here's where we get to the applique part. I'd like everyone to look at page 14 in your instructions, okay? And you're going to notice that, again, if I were, we've got background quilting done now. It, we are ready for the applique process of the house. So at this point, that's when we would actually start following the instructions on page 14. I want you to look in the second column at step number one, okay? It says to stitch the background placement line, and then it wants you to fold up a piece of the bottom piece of fabric one inch and then put it on that placement line. Guess what? You don't, you've already done the background quilting. I want you to skip steps one and two. So I'm gonna show it right here. Uh, let's go ahead and get a close up of that, a real close up here of that, okay? Notice how I wrote skip and skip. If you are doing the background quilting, just like I'm showing right now, you're going to skip and skip, okay? Uh, so go ahead and you would just mark that out and mark all of that out. That also means, here's the picture showing you that, we're going to skip, 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 skip. This is just showing step one and step two here and all the process in between. So this whole row, we can skip because we've already tacked down our fabric, we've already found um, where the bottom of our house needs to land, and we don't have to do these steps. Now, if you were doing this pillow and you weren't doing the background quilting, then absolutely follow these steps, all right? So the first thing we're gonna start with is step number three. Step number three is to stitch the house placement line. All right, so in, um, let me go ahead and change my thread color so you'll be able to see it a little better. 
when you go to do um, applicate, if you're new to applicate, it's basically a three-step process. You're going to do what we call a placement line, and that tells you where to place your fabric. You're then going to, uh, the machine's going to stop and you'll do, um, you'll cut away the extra fabric. I'll show you that here in just a minute. Then you're going to take it back to your machine and you will do, um, well, oh, sorry, I missed a step in there. You do your placement line and then you place your fabric. Then you do what we call a tack down line, which is going to keep that design from shifting and then cut away that extra fabric. Let me show you um, a little bit better this way. All right. So the first step is going to be stitching the house placement line. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. I am so glad. Let's go ahead and go to this camera. <laughs> you guys, this is why doing lives is so important. I just made a little oopsie here, <laughs> but I'm glad I did. I'll, I'll just say it. I'm glad I did because what I was supposed to do is actually skip. Remember I said skip those steps in your book? You're also supposed to skip them on the machine. <laughs> so what I had done, and it won't matter because it's not going to show, but look what I did. Let's take an up close image of this. Oh my goodness, Kim. All right. I did step one, which was a placement line. And that's not what I wanted. Remember what I said? Skip those steps. Let me show you the, the picture again in the book. <laughs> skip these steps here. I even highlighted it. I circled it, but I forgot to do it on my machine. Now I'm going to do that. Ah, oh, well. Do as I say, not as I do. I don't know. <laughs> what I want you to do is skip. And you can easily do that through um, your machine steps right here. Okay. Now we're in the right spot, my friends. We are going to do... Ah, the step for the house placement line. All right. All right. I've got my house fabric ready. I'm ready with this. Make it nice and smooth here. Okay. Now, if you did that, let's go ahead and go to this one here. If you did what I just did, which you weren't supposed to, but if you did it, guess what? It's okay because it's going to be sewn into the seam. I don't want you to get a seam ripper and pick it out. It's going to be sewn into the seam. So no big deal. All right. So I have already stitched out my placement line. That looks a little better. Let's go ahead and take a close up of that, of the house block. And now I know where to lay my fabric. There we go. Here we go. That's where I want to lay my red fabric. I'm going to lay it on top and then do my tack down line. Now, this is a personal preference. If you want to, you could use like a spray adhesive like I'm going to here. And I'm just going to give it a quick spray and then place it on top. Um, and then it, it won't shift. I could also take Kimberbell paper tape right here. And I am going to tape on one end and the other. That will also prevent it from shifting. It is up to you. All right. Okay. So I am going to go ahead and do what we call the tack down line that will show me where to cut the fabric away. Okay, Barbara asks, would you put fusible backing on your house pieces since they are lighter? You absolutely could, Barbara. Um, I did not, but you absolutely could. Uh, 
we we do like fusible backing on the backs of our fabrics, especially our background fabrics, but certainly an applique fabric, that would be great too. All right, so I've done my tack down line right here, and now I wanna cut away the extra fabric. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, these are the Kimberbell Duckbill applique scissors, which I know a lot of you out there have. We love them. Okay. There we go. All trimmed up. So now that we have that done, let's look at our instructions. And we are on, um, let's see, step five which is the placement line for the roof of the house. Now, one thing you might notice at this point is you look at your instructions on the paper and it says you're on step five. And then you go over to your machine and you're thinking, wait a minute, it says I'm on step 10. Why are those not matching up like they usually do? Well, there's a very simple reason for it. You've combined designs now. Yeah. So the reason why now those numbers on the machine aren't matching the numbers on, on your paper is because you've now combined steps for background quilting and steps for the, the house itself. And so your numbers are not gonna be exactly right, but that's okay. Just keep following step by step in your instructions and you will be just fine okay the only reason why they don't match up is because you combine the designs and now there's a lot more steps to it right okay so i've done my background uh my placement line for my roof okay so what i'm gonna do next is just place my solid pink here on top of that roof and i'm going to just tape it in a couple of places Again, you could use tape. You could also use 505 spray or temporary spray adhesive. Um, and you could certainly put fusible backing on it like uh, Barbara mentioned. Okay. All right. Place it back on my machine and stitch the tack down line. All right. Okay. Let's see. Any other questions I can answer while that's stitching out? Yes, you definitely want to use the, the paper tape to prevent it from shifting. Um, I also like a spray adhesive every now and then if I really um, want that piece to lay flat and not shift, that's also helpful. Either way is good or both. Okay. All right. So it's done my tack down line here for the house. A look there we go see this is why i love appliques we can just you know throw a piece of fabric on there and now we know exactly where to cut away the extra fabric it is really fantastic now i noticed someone in the comments asked about svg files yes our designs uh applique designs do include SVG files. So that means if you have an electronic cutting machine like, oh, the Scan and Cut or, um, boy, a Cricut. I'm trying to think of the, all the names of them right now. But there's a lot of different brands of machines that you can use, um, have electronic cutting uh, capability. And you could certainly do that with these. Okay. All right. It's beginning to look a little bit more like a house, right? All right, let's go ahead and do the next step, which is the doorway. And then we'll skip ahead to, to do some more um, tutorial. Okay, what it did was the placement outline. So I know exactly where to place my door fabric. I'm gonna put it on top there. I'm going to tape it in place. Okay, and 
let's do the tap down line. All right, I think you get the idea, right? At this point, we would trim away this extra fabric uh, from the doorway, and then we would continue on with the steps. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside so that we can move on to some other techniques here. What you wanna make sure, of course, and do, you can see how detailed these instructions are. Look, let's look at page 15, for example. I don't want you to worry and think, oh no, she's not showing every single step because everything is very detail uh, detailed and outlined. Um, exactly where you're placing fabric and where you're stitching designs. And if you just follow this step by step, you cannot go wrong, all right? Now, um, let me show you a, a, one other theme about the candy cane, all right? Um, this is the candy cane right here. And you'll have oh, maybe three or four candy canes on, on this uh, bench pillow. Isn't that so gorgeous? And it's got the red glitter and then the white is stitched on top. So I wanted to show you what a difference um, our Kimberbell topping makes. And you get this actually in your embellishment kit. Um, this is a white topping. Um, what a difference it makes when you go to do something like that candy cane. Let me show you. Now this, that white does come in the embellishment kit, but we also have this in all kinds of colors um, in a package that looks like this. It's called Kimberbell Embroidery Topping. This is what you'd wanna be looking for. And in it has sheets of all kinds of the most common colors that we uh, would use this for. And you might be thinking now, why am I using this? Well, I'll explain it here in just a minute, okay? So you've got red, you've got white, you've got black, um, red, yellow, and blue. Uh, you don't have to have the exact same color, like the tone, the same exact tone um, as what you're stitching, just as long as it's you know in the similar color family. This is what I'm talking about. Right here, Let's see how close we can get on this. I've actually separated two of these candy canes so that you could see a difference. What I did here on this first candy cane is I did not use topping, okay? I did not use what it calls for in the instructions. I thought, I want you to see what happens when you don't use topping underneath that white. Do you see that you can see view thread because, or not thread, red. You can see the red glitter under there, can't you? Now, is it the end of the world? No, <laughs> obviously, but if we want it to be nice and bright and clean and white like whoop, this candy cane. Notice under that white thread, you don't see the red uh, glitter underneath it. And that's because we used our um, white topping. All right. So I'm going to take you through the steps with this second one. I've actually already placed, um, done my placement line for the candy cane. And I thought, well, this is a good, uh, one to do. Let me go ahead and get out of this. Oh, I'm going to change. Okay. I'm going to delete that pattern. I want to find the, the candy canes just so that I can show you that in this example, not only how to do, use our water, uh, water, not water, our topping, our embroidery topping, but also um, how to use glitter. Okay. So let me just skip ahead to this point. Okay. So right now, I've 
I've already done this. I've actually stitched out the placement outline for the candy cane. And now I'm getting ready to place the glitter on top of it. Okay. Let's take a look. There we go. And I want to place this on top. But one thing I want you to remember <laughs> is that you've got to peel away the plastic on the glitter. All right. There we go. You want to peel that off. Set that aside, and now you have a glittery side and you have a fusible side. I'm just going to use this just like I would um, like fabric. I'm going to place that on top so that it covers the entire candy cane. All right. And I'm going to tape it down so that it doesn't shift when I go to do my tack down line. And then I'll show you how I use this topping. Um, as you can see, I've actually already used one of them, <laughs> one section of it, and how that just makes it nice and bright and white and you can't see underneath it. What this does and what any of those colors do is that it, it creates a barrier between very two contrasting colors. So because we have a dark red underneath and I'm putting this white stitching on top, um, it's nice to use a topper in cases like that um, if, the, if you know the thread is not going to cover it entirely. Okay, so that's why we use it. It's a permanent uh, piece. It doesn't wash out. It's just something that just lies underneath uh, your piece, your threads. Okay. All right, so I've done my tack down line and I want to trim away the extra um, glitter. Okay, just going to quickly do that. All right. And I think I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out a different pair of scissors here. Okay, I'm gonna use um, these little guys, flexible ones, just to get inside this curve a little bit easier. That's why I like having multiple tools in this tool set, is because you use them for different reasons, right? Okay, now. Again, at this point, what I did before was I just took it back to the machine and I stitched white on top of that candy cane. But again, I can see gaps where I see the red, right? And I don't want to see that. So what I do instead, this time around, I'm actually going to take my Kimberbell topping right here. It's called embroidery topping, and I'm going to lay it on top. And then I'm going to stitch out with white, I'm going to stitch out um, those candy cane stripes. I want to quickly change my thread too, to white. Whoops. All right, okay, so before I stitch, I'm just gonna lay this over the top and I could tape it in a couple places if I want to and then start stitching. It's gonna stitch right on top and then I'll pull it away, okay? All right, Gloria says, I think I missed a step. Um, did you not fold up the one inch, but instead move to the bottom of the house down? Yeah. Um, Gloria, when you do the background quilting first, you skip um, the step of folding it up one inch. You don't have to do that. If you weren't doing the background quilting, then yeah, that's when you would have to do that. Okay. Um, all right. Now that is stitching and it's it's going, 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 and it's gonna give a nice coverage on that candy cane. And I'm not gonna even wait till it's all done. I'll get one more one more stripe done and then I'll show you how I pull it away um, so that we can move on 
to the next technique. All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop it and cut my thread here. Now, normally, normally you're going to do this the entire thing. Let's go ahead and go to this camera, Andrew. Um, I would continue this process. Uh, if I were to finish up this candy cane, I would continue doing these stripes along here. Do you notice? There we go. We've got a filled stripe and another filled stripe. And it would continue going up this candy cane till it was all done. At that point, that's when I'd actually tear this away. And look how nicely it tears away. Okay. Just, just like that. Do you see the difference? I don't know how well you can see down there, but that is full coverage my friends right there and uh, you don't see any red under so anyway there's just a little tip for how to use the embroidery topping i know oftentimes there are questions about it so i thought i would show you an example all right now the next technique i'm going to share with you um, and then we'll talk about clear blue tiles if you have a smaller hoop Okay, but this time I want to share with you how if you don't have embroidery software and your machine doesn't have the ability to combine designs on the machine, how would you know where the house sits, right? So here's what I did. Let's go ahead and go to this one. This, I went ahead and did the background quilting just like it's supposed to, to go, right? But do you remember this printout let's see remember that and I said that you want your house to land on this inner line right there that's where your batting had been where your batting stopped and you want it to land right there hey you know what line that is I'm going to take my finger here and I'm going to feel right along this edge and I can tell where my batting stops. Guess where it is? It's right there. Do you see that there's a quarter inch now in between those, those two lines? Just like this one. This is the, where your batting ended. This is where your batting ended. There's a quarter inch between those two lines. That's exactly where you want your house to land. But how do you find that? How do you find that on your machine when you go to shift it? Well, it's it's pretty simple. Let me show you, okay? That's the goal is to get where I marked it in, in blue. I'm gonna pull up, I've already done the background quilting. Let me go ahead and find my house design. Okay, and there we go. Okay, so on all machines that I can think of, may, I, I'm certain every machine has this capability. You have arrows. I think it just went out. There we go. You have arrows to move your design. So I pulled up the house design. Can we get any closer on this area right here, Andrew? Okay, do you see that I've got arrows that can move designs up or down or side to side? What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of guesstimate where that's going to land. Now, how am I going to know if that house block is where my blue line was that I marked, right? Well, your machine will also have a feature. I'm going to use, I'm going to show you on this one, but they're all very similar where it will tell you, you can move, um, it'll show you the areas that your embroidery, embroidery area would cover. So here we can go to the top and it's gonna show me where the top of my design lands. I can press it to the side and it's gonna shift over and I'm gonna see where the side of my block would land over here. Let's move it to the right side. I can see where it's going to end up landing here and 
The most important line I want to look for is where is it going to land on the bottom. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to drop my needle and I am pretty darn close. Can we get closer up on that? I guesstimated pretty good there. And if it's close enough, it is close enough in my, <laughs> in my eyes, right? So I dropped my needle and I know the bottom of my house is going to land right where I marked that line, okay? Again, you want it to land where the batting uh, was, where the batting ended, where your batting placement line was, all right? So there's just a little tip for you. If you get to this point, you're like, oh, well, it didn't land there. No problem. You just go back and you go back to these arrows here. Okay. Again, all machines should have some type of arrow feature, whatever yours looks like, to shift your house or your applique design, whatever it is, up, down, left, right, however you want it. Okay. But then I can see where it lands um, just with a, a few clicks of the button there. Okay. I hope that makes sense. All right. So I would go through this process again of now taking my house design, bringing it in on top, and then stitching it out. All right. Okay. So that is how you do the house walk. Simple, right? Here we go. You just did this. Well, or you will today, right? <laughs> we just did this. Um, there are going to be little eyelets that you will cut later. We will talk about cutting on, I believe it's Wednesday. I'm going to talk about how to cut those little eyelets and even how to, to cut your blocks. Uh, we will talk about that um, Wednesday. We will also talk on Wednesday about doing um, those fringed wreaths, some tips for doing that. I've got two tips for that. So uh, I will share that at Wednesday at noon. Uh, we'll probably even talk a little bit about that tree block, uh, which we used our flexi foam behind to give it some dimension and some pop. But again, once you know this technique, you can do all of the other blocks. It really is that simple, okay? Now, that is it for this tutorial, but if you're sitting there and thinking, well, I wish I knew how to do this with a smaller size hoop. Maybe you only have a five by seven hoop. I want you to stay with me because I'm gonna show you how I used clear blue tiles to get this same, same look even with a five by seven hoop. Now you can actually do, because this design is created for a five by seven, the house design, but the background quilting, you need a larger hoop for than a five by seven. But now because of clear blue tiles right here, you'll be able to do this and it's going to look as if you had a larger hoop. You're not going to be able to tell the difference. Are you ready? So I wanted to do it first for all those who have larger hoops because if you're good to go, then I don't want to keep you any longer. I know you're you're busy, right? But if you want to stay with me and find out how to do it, even with a five by seven hoop with clear blue tiles, let's let's still hang out together for a little bit longer, shall we? All right. So again, these are for people who have a smaller size hoop. Let me clear some space here. <laughs> My table has gotten really uh, messy. I'm just going to throw it down here for now, right? I'm going to still keep out my instructions because you're going to see how we are going to do things a little bit different on page 14 um, with the clear blue tiles and such. Okay, toss that aside. Uh, you're going to want to pull out your tiles and I think we're, I think I'm good to go. Okay, let me get my steps out for this. So what I'm about to show you um, is actually similar steps are in the Clear Blue Tiles book and they are found on page... If you will go to page 22 in your Clear Blue Tiles book, 
what I'm about to show you on this video is really what we're doing here as, um, as a little extra thing on how to add quilting to other projects. So besides, you know, quilts and table runners and pillows and such, we wanted to show you how you could add it to just about anything, aprons or, or bags or anything like that. So this technique that I'm about to show you here is actually something that's actually also in the clear blue tiles guide as well. Okay, so just so you have a reference to go back to. Now, when you pull up this particular design, we're going to use the one with the, the um, little peppermints and the candy canes. There's gonna be two different files, uh, file folders, I should say, on your USB. And what they are is that you've got something we call a block by block folder, and then you have the clear blue tiles folder, okay? For what I just did with a larger hoop, I used, and I could do it all in one hooping, I could do it all together at the same time, I used the block by block method. The block by block method is so that you do not have batting in the seams, okay? Um, but I have, or you have, a smaller hoop, right? And you can't do it exactly that way that I just showed. So that's why you're going to use, you're going to choose the folder called the clear blue tiles folder. All right. Let me show you the difference with, again, two diagrams. Let me show you. Let's go ahead to go to the overhead camera. They look a lot alike, don't they? Here we go. They look a lot alike, but there's one very distinct difference. Maybe I should say two, right? Right here, I labeled this one as the four by six block by block. You'll see why I chose four by six here in just a minute. So notice that it has these two outer orange lines here, just in this particular printout, right? I've got these two outer lines. Do you remember what those two outer lines are for? They are for block by block because it will prevent batting from being in the seams, right? Remember that we trim away the extra batting? You won't see any batting in these seams and it stitched it all out at once. But if you go to the clear blue tiles folder, look at what you're seeing. Here, maybe this is a little easier. There we go. Ah, there we go. Now you can actually read my writing, right? <laughs> All right. There. Okay, trying to do this upside down is crazy, right? Okay, so as I mentioned, this these two outer squares are the only thing that's different between the block by block method and the clear blue tiles method. Notice the clear blue tiles it's just the candy canes and the loops, right? And the peppermints. There is no outer block, if you will. No block by block. Makes sense, right? Because we want, uh, we want this to just flow all over. We're going to have to combine them. And we want it to flow all across our block. All right? So let's take a look at how we do that. All right. What I did is I chose the clear blue tile design, background design. Here's what I wanted, to, how I'm going to find out how to do this. Do you remember, or if you don't remember, let's look at it right now. Um, let's go to page 16. Remember those trimming instructions that we talked about? Okay, these trimming instructions, there we go, right here. It says to square the finished block to six and a half by eight and a half inches. So that tells us we needed the six by eight um, design, background quilting design. And you're like, okay, yeah, Kim, but I don't have a six, I don't have something that will fit a six by eight. I only have a five by seven. No worries, I got you. <laughs> I got you. Look at how cool this is. I'm still going to grab the six by eight tile, okay? Because I want to know that this is the area that I'm covering, okay? 
So I still have this here just for my frame of reference. So I know how much area I'm supposed to cover, but I don't have a hoop this size. And so I need smaller tiles to fit in that same space, right? So let me back up for just a minute. With this method, you're going to actually cut out your background fabric just like it outlines in your instructions. So this was a little bit larger. It was eight and a half by 10 and a half. Okay. Still going to cut it out that size. You're going to cut out a piece of batting that's a little bit larger than that size. Okay. Again, this is just with the clear blue tiles method. Whenever we use clear blue tiles, we're usually using them for big quilts, right? Or we have a quilt sandwich and we layer our backing and our batting and our top. Well, we're kind of doing the same thing here, just on a lot smaller of a scale. So I'm going to put my batting in there, right? I'm not going to put any backing on this right now. I don't need to do, worry about that yet. I'm going to put my batting. It's larger. Let's go ahead and go to the overhead. It is larger on all four sides of my background block. Okay, I'm just gonna lay that one on top of the other. I can use any type of uh, basting method. I'm gonna use just a, a few squirts of uh, spray adhesive so that that attaches to the back and doesn't shift. Whoop. There we go. Um, but you, we have several methods uh, for putting your layers together for clear blue tiles. And this is the one I'm going to show you here, but you can also do a few other ones, okay? Now, the other thing that you want to get in the habit of is actually taping down your outer edges just so that um, your presser foot does not lift up, accidentally lift up the fabric. All right, so I will quickly do that. You don't want your presser foot to get caught in lifting this right here, and then you've got a whole mess. Have you ever had that happen? <laughs> so just like you would do um, for quilting this, for quilting like a big quilt, you'll do the same thing here, okay? All right, so now I've, I'm ready, I'm set, right? Okay, now let's go back to that block. This is the area that you want to cover, right? This is the six by eight design. You don't have a size that big, but that's okay. For right now, I just want you to get it out because I want you to see the space you need to cover. I'm actually going to mark these corners. See where we have these little blue um, tick marks right here? I'm just going to mark around the outside edge in a few places on the corners and on the sides so that I know when I lift this up that this is the area I'm going to cover, all right? Again, what I'm explaining now is different than, a little different than what you would do, the technique you would use for doing all uh, quilting, like doing a quilt with clear blue tiles, but I'm using this method still to show you that we can do these little smaller blocks even if we have a smaller hoop, okay? So I know that with a five by seven, I can actually fit a four by six um, tile or file and tile <laughs> on my five by seven. So instead, I'm actually going to cover this and this with the same tile. Let's just go ahead and remove this. This was only, this six by eight was only to show us the area we needed to cover. This right here, look at that. I know it's going to cover that. And if I move it down, it's going to cover this. I say this probably every time I do a demo on clear blue tiles, but I'll say it again. <laughs> I want you to think about a tile being like a rubber stamp, okay? And if I were to take this tile and dip it in ink over here and then stamp it onto my project, Wherever that tile lands is where the quilting is gonna land or wherever that ink, if you will, in this case, would land, right? So if I were to stamp it in ink, put it right here, that is exactly whatever's under the blue tile is what is going to be quilted. So therefore, I wanna make sure that the whole area I need quilting 
is covered with it, right? So it's really simple to do. All I need to do, again, let's show you the area this way. I could put it on top here. I could put it on top here. But I'm going to remove this because now we've already marked out our perimeter. And I know the area I need to cover. I'm going to mark place this here. And I'm going to do a few key markings, OK? The first thing you want to do, I'm going to turn it towards me here. First thing you want to do is mark the center dot. Whoop. Then you're going to mark your crosshairs. Okay. You're going to do this with a water soluble pen. You could do it with a disappearing pen. Notice there's an arrow at the top of my, my uh, blue tile. So I'm going to use that to my advantage. And you'll see why here in a minute. So I marked the arrow. The other thing to know, and I'm going to show you this really let's close let's get a close-up on this camera here i want you to notice what size of tile you're using Ooh, there we go the tile name and size is shown right there four by six notice there's an an open window right here I'm going to write that same number in this window on my fabric, four by six. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to the overhead. I'm going to place that back where it was. Okay. Again, four by six, I'm going to mark it in the window, four by six. Okay, four x six. Then I'm going to do a few other markings. Uh, again, just to get into the habit of how you mark this, I'm going to mark the corners. This is on the fabric itself, right? And I'm going to mark the sides. Why do I do that? Do you notice there's still this space that needs to be covered over here? If I did not mark that, I wouldn't know where to place this next tile, right? But because I marked it, I can go, oh, let's slide that over to the edge and just butt those edges up right up against each other. And look, now I've covered that side, okay? I could do the arrow this way, or I could even flip it and do it this way. It doesn't matter, okay? In fact, I'll just keep it the other way just because. Where am I going to mark? I'm going to mark the center dot. I'm going to mark the crosshairs. I'm going to mark the arrow. The arrow will always point to the top of my hoop. Okay. And I'm going to mark my side markings. I don't want you to press hard on this. Use a very light touch with these because you're going to have to uh, spray it out with water later. And so it will be much easier if you don't press hard. The other thing I want to do, of course, is don't forget. Mark four by six, okay? Why is that important? Well, when we go to lift this up, we wouldn't know, <laughs> we'd be going, asking ourselves, now what design size am I supposed to pull up? Ah, four by six, okay? All right, now we are good to go. I can do this in two small hoopings because of clear blue tiles instead of having to have a large hoop. Pretty cool, right? Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my five by seven hoop, okay? And I put just a lightweight tear away stabilizer in this. You could also use like, a, oh, you could use like a sticky back stabilizer too. You could certainly do that. Just something really lightweight. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about leaving I'm going to tear this away afterwards, but it's in the pillow. So if there's some little extra, no big deal. The first thing I want to do is actually pull up a design on my machine. That is the what we call the crosshairs centering file. OK, this file will come with all of the clear blue tiles uh, designs. So it is on your USB stick. And what it's gonna do is it's going to sit, it's going to make crosshairs right here directly on top of my stabilizer. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me pull that up. There we go. And I'm going to change the color thread real quick so that you can um, 
see it better. Now, one thing to remember is that the technique I'm showing you right now, um, real quick, hold on. Let me get this started and then we'll talk about it. Okay, let's go ahead and go this one. Uh, the technique I'm showing you right now is not normal <laughs> with clear blue tiles. What you would do with clear blue tiles on a normal basis is that you wouldn't have any stabilizer for one because you have your quilt sandwich and that becomes, you quilt, you hold the whole quilt sandwich in your hoop. You do not need extra stabilizer with clear blue tiles, okay? Um, I'm using stabilizer because my fabric is smaller than my hoop, right? And I need to be able to get it in the right position. So that's why I'm using stabilizer. Again, this is explained in your book as, as well. Notice how I have the cross hairs right here. So let's go ahead and go to this one. This is what I just stitched out on my machine. It's what we would call the centering cross hairs. All right. Because I want my marks from here to match with the marks there. Okay. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to get a really fancy tool called a thumbtack. <laughs> See that? It is just your flathead thumbtack right there. And I'm going to turn my hoop to the back and I'm going to find the center point of where those crosshairs meet, right? And I'm gonna place my thumbtack, boom, right in the middle. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get any fancier than that, my friends. <laughs> that is all you do. And then you can turn it over and now you see <laughs> the tip of the tack. Got that? The tip of the tack. All right, there. It's poking out. Why do we do that? <laughs> why, why? Well, we need to know how to center this, right? We are gonna match the tip of that thumbtack with one of our centering points on here. That thumbtack needs to go right where that center point is. Don't forget where your arrow was. I can't just put this on here as is. I need to make sure my arrow is also pointed towards the top of my hoop. You always, that's why we drew the arrow. The arrow always points up to the top of your hoop. Okay, so that means I'm gonna flip my design around and I'm gonna match the tip of the tack with the center point on my fabric. Again, this is just a specialized technique for this type of project. It's not what you would normally do with clear blue tiles. You don't use thumbtacks or stabilizer or anything for your regular quilts. This is an exception, okay? All right, do you notice, let's get, let's show this camera here so you can see that. See my thumbtack? The tip of it, there we go. The tip of it is right there in the center. All right, gonna go back here. Okay, we're getting close, guys. I prom this is not hard. It, once you do it once or twice, you're gonna be like, oh, easy peasy, not a problem, right? Okay, so the next thing I wanna do, there we go, is I wanna make sure that got on there nice and, and square, right? I I mean, I could have put it like this and now my quilting is gonna be a little ski wampus, right? So I wanna make sure that those arrows are going up and down perfectly. So that's when I would take my plastic template grid. How many of you go, oh, is that what that's for? <laughs> If you're like me, you're thinking, oh, wait a minute, I got to pull that out of the box still, right? We love these plastic template grids. Normally, they do come with your machine. Um, some machines, you might have to buy yours separately. And if you don't have one, if you lost it, it's cracked, whatever it may be, no worries. I've got a video on how to make your own, and you can find that on YouTube. Okay, 
So I'm going to place this over that just so that I can make sure my crosshairs look. I'm going to show you what it would look like if that wasn't centered. Do you see how my blue arrow is going like this way and this way and it's not centered this way? Now that I've got my plastic template grid, I know that this is straight up and down. All right. Aha. There we go. We want it right. Ooh, that's looking good. All right. We want those crosshairs to be right underneath the crosshairs on our grid. All right. Okay. Now, once we've done that, we're feeling pretty darn good about things, right? <laughs> we're going to take out our paper tape. Oh, look at that. See, I even messed it up when I brought out my tape. So no big deal. I'm going to use my grid again. We'll get that back in place. Look at these split. All right. Oh my gosh, I even popped it out. All right, folks. Live TV. Gotta love it. Okay, I'm going to put this back in my center point. There we go. I'm going to place my grid on top. I'm going to make sure those crosshairs are fitting nicely underneath. And we should be good. Okay, awesome. Now, I'm going to lift that up very carefully. And then I'm going to tape this to the hoop in a few places just so that it doesn't shift on me again, right? Okay. I'm going to do the most important part. Ouch. You don't want that anymore, right? I'm going to take that out. Turn it to the back and remove that tack. Don't forget. Please don't forget. Okay. And now I'm going to put it onto my machine where I will be able to do my quilting design. All right. So I'm going to pull up the quilting design for the clear blue tiles. Okay. Again, that means it's not going to have an outer edge, which is what we want for this because we're combining quilting designs together. They have to look like they all flow, right? So I'm going to, let me find my quilting design. I'm going to pull up um, the four by six background quilting design. That's the clipper tiles. Okay. I have pulled it up and I'm going to, it's found the center and I want to drop my needle and the needle needs to drop right where your centering point was. It's right where that thumbtack used to be, right? Your needle drops there. If it doesn't drop there, um, you may want to reposition it. You can, you know, bring your needle up and you can shift it over. You, you decide how close you want it to be. It needs to be pretty darn close, right? Straight up and down, needle drop. Um, if you did it, you know, with your grid beforehand, then you should be pretty darn close to the, the center point. I'm feeling good about this. It's time to quilt my design. All right. So it's going to stitch just in this area. And I'm going to do it in red so that you can see it. Okay. While that's stitching out, it won't take long. I'm going to look at your questions here. Yes. <laughs> Diana said, this may not be the normal process for CBTs, which is clear blue tiles, um, but it's really showing the versatility of the clear blue tiles. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Diana. That's what makes these so awesome in so many ways is because there is so much versatility with them, even though that's not exactly the reason for how we designed them in the first place, but it works for, for this as well. We want you to still be able to do the background quilting, even if you have a small hoop. All right. Okay. Um, Lynn, could you rotate the design to match the arrow? Yes, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Charlene, you are welcome. She says, thank you for demonstrating this technique. Charlene, I... 
I am happy to do it and I hope it helps with any of your future background quilting designs as well. Uh, Deborah says, is the replay going to be on YouTube? And the answer is yes, Deborah. It will be on both YouTube and our Facebook page. So you can watch it at any time. All right. Um, Marlene says, so when you are doing the embroidery files, aren't they half an inch bigger than the finished size? Um, yes, if you are using the block by block method. The reason why the block by block method is a half an inch larger is because um, we have, remember those outer squares, right? The outer squares we've been talking about, that is where your um, batting is. And so that's why it's larger uh, on that. But if you use the clear blue tiles files, it's gonna fit right inside that area. So you don't need the extra half an inch for that. So make sure you're using the right ones, okay? All right, looks like our first one is done. Let's take a look. Oh my gosh, is that just, oh, that's so cute. I just love it. Let's take a look at that up close. Ah, just beautiful. I love it. Okay, so we used, um, we, we did this side, right, with our smaller, tile and file but now we've got to do this side over here and how do we do that well let me show you how easy it is i'm just going to quickly pop this out of the hoop okay. and on this case i did use a tear away so i'm just going to gently turn much of it away but you don't you don't have to get all of it in this case because it's uh going to be inside of the pillow and you're going to end up actually having backing um, another piece of stabilizer on here later when you go to do your, your, um, house block. So I just pulled out, you know, as much as I could there. And now I'm ready to do this other side. So you're just going to repeat the same steps that I just did. So I'm going to take the tearaway stabilizer. This is the lightweight. This is the pink, uh, pink labeled one. Okay. To stitch my crosshairs. You know what to do next, right? Let's think about this. What? What did she do before? Yes, it was those crosshairs. Okay, let's do that. I'm going to pull up the crosshairs real quick and stitch that out. Okay. Um, Charlene said, when marking your fabric, you placed your arrows in opposite directions. Why? That is a great question, Charlene. Only because I said I wanted to show that it wouldn't matter which way you place your arrows. That's all. You could do it up. You could do it down. Um, it really doesn't matter. The one thing that it does do, if you don't want it to look... Let's say, let's look at this, for example, Shirley. If we don't want it to look exactly like, see, see this here. We've got our top arrow on this one right here. Well, let me do it backwards here. So we have our top arrow right here. And then if we were to do the top arrow again right here, then it's going to almost look like a stamp, right? It's going to look like, oh, yep, yeah, the candy cane goes there and the flipperant goes there. And it's just going to look exactly the same. And we want it to look more flowing. So I just switched it. I just said, you know what? This time I want this to go over here. And so that's that's the only reason why. I hope that helps, Charlene. Okay. So, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, I have now stitched my crosshair on here. And remember our fancy tool? <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and go to this one. Um, the thumbtack, right? I'm going to turn my hoop to the back, and I'm going to place my thumbtack right smack in the center. Turn it over. Remember what 
uh, where we need to line our arrow, it always needs to be lined towards the top of the hoop. So I'm going to do that and I'm just going to place that dot, that center point right where uh, the tack was, right on top of that. All right? Okay. I'm going to use my grid to make sure that my crosshairs are lined up. And that's looking pretty darn good. Okay. So I can take that off. Then I'll just quickly tape this to the hoop so that it doesn't shift. When I, I know I've said this before, but if you just caught, came on, I wanna make sure you know that with the regular clear blue tiles method, you do not have to do all this taping and thumbtacks and stabilizer. None of that is needed because you're actually hooping your entire quilt sandwich. This is just one of those times when you when you do it a little bit differently. Okay, I took the thumbtack out. Now I can place this onto the bed of my machine. Let's see what happens. Again, because I wrote four by six, I know to bring up the four by six file. If I had a different um, number in there, I would bring up whatever tile and file matched it. Okay, embroidery. All right, I'm gonna drop my needle and it dropped right in that center point. So I am good to go and start the machine. Okay, now, um, one other thing. Yeah, here we go. What's cool about clear blue tiles is that, of course, in this box, you get a whole lot of tiles in all different sizes, right? And all the background quilting designs found at Kimberbell.com um, work perfectly uh, with these. Um, they're designed to go with them, right? And so it wouldn't matter if we had a large tile or a very small tile or somewhere in between, right? We've got all these different sizes, but the great thing is they're all at the same scale. So that means these peppermints and candy canes and everything that are being stitched right now, no matter what tile size you're using, it's all just going to work together. It's all going to look like um, the same quilting design, which makes it look like you had like a really large hoop and you didn't, okay? Uh, you, they all are the same scale. It works beautifully together, okay? All right, so that's stitching out. Cheryl says, I guess I will have to get the clear blue tiles. Looks so easy to use. Oh, Cheryl, yes, they absolutely are. Um, you know, at first people might be like, oh, this looks tedious or this looks hard or this. No, 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 no. We walk you through every single step, not only in the book itself, but there um, are videos on uh, our, our Facebook page and our, our Kimberbell YouTube channel and QR codes within the book itself that will have me walking you through every single step. And I'll tell you, once you, once you do one or two of them, you're going, oh, that's simple. Especially, now this method is showing, showing a very unique case for using them. But when you're using them for big quilts and table toppers and table runners and wall hangings and pillows, uh, you're, you're not doing all this extra stuff that I'm showing you. You're literally doing three steps. We call it place it, mark it, quilt it. You place your tile down, you mark your tile with your water soluble pen, and then you quilt it. So simple, simple, simple. All right. It finished up. Look at that, you guys. Look at that. You have now quilted the entire background with a smaller hoop. And really, I mean, wow. Especially once you now wash away these markings, you're not going to be able to see where one started and one began. It's just the coolest thing. Okay, um, Connie says, I just used clear blue tiles for the first time yesterday. Love it. Oh, I'm so happy for you, Connie. Thank you for sharing that. Very, very excited. Okay. 
All right. Um, does the book come with the files? Yes. Yes. So this book comes in the essential set. There's an essential set which um, everyone needs. And then um, it comes with the book. It comes with all the tiles. It comes with a USB full of more embroidery designs right here that you'd see on the back here. All of these embroidery designs in all the different sizes are included. Um, really fun stuff. Okay, so it includes all that. Now, if you have larger hoops, you can buy an expansion set of tiles and all of those sizes or all those, wow, all of those embroidery files are still in the essential set, but now you'll have the big, big tiles to use your bigger hoops for. All right. Okay, so now we're at this, the point where we have quilted the background. Now, what do we do? We still got to put the house on, right? Oh, there we go. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is just tear away that stabilizer. Again, you, you could use a wash away if you wanted, but it's you could even use a cutaway. You're not going to see any of it, so no big deal. Okay. Um. And then what I want to do is I'm going to take some scissors and I want to cut this block out to the, the size that it was meant to be. Remember, I had extra batting here. So I'm going to cut that out. Okay. So quilts are cutting this all the way back to where its original size was. Okay, now um, at this point you may be thinking, but isn't doesn't that mean there's going to be batting in the seams? No, what you can do is when you cut this down to the very final size at the end, after you've done the applique house, then um, you can trim away a quarter inch of the batting from below it. Okay. All right. Okay, guys, we are in the home stretch. Are you ready? to know how this now becomes, where, wherever my quilt block was, <laughs> this becomes this. You, it's so cool. I can't wait to show you. Let's turn in your instructions to page 14. Page 14. I want you to think of this now as it's a brand new piece of fabric. We know it's been quilted, right? We know. But the book doesn't know that. <laughs> so if you used clear blue tiles for this, you're going to just treat this like it was a, another piece of fabric. And you are following the directions just as outlined on page 14. Okay? So that means, remember when I said before earlier, that you could skip some steps. Let's take a look at this. We skipped steps one and two before when we were doing this all together at the quilting and everything all in the same file. We could skip those steps because we didn't need them. But now we are treating this as a brand new piece of fabric that we have just cut. And so we are going to follow those steps. Okay. So it says um, that you would stitch the background placement line. So I'm going to, mm, let's see, do I have my hoop here? Yeah. Okay. Um, remember when I made that little mistake earlier and I <laughs> stitched the background placement line? Oh, now you want to do it. Okay. So you're going to stitch that. And let me show you how easy that is. Okay. Actually, I used a, a tearaway on this just because I grabbed it, but I think I'd probably use what it says in the book, which is a light mesh cutaway. Either one will work though. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pull up the house. We are almost done, guys. And embroidery. OK, 
okay? I don't have to worry about shifting this, okay? I'm pretending like this has not been quilted. It's just like, yep, I just cut a piece of fabric, no big deal. Because now I'm going to follow the instructions as they are outlined on, step, on page 14, okay? So the very first step was a placement line um, for my fabric. And it says, let's see. Yeah, you you are going to fold this in half to find the center. And of course, my thread is out. <laughs> of course. Okay, let's just look at. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and re see if we. Oh, it wasn't out. It was just came unthreaded. Okay, we can do this quick. All right, we'll do it. <laughs> Okay, there we go. All right, now it's gonna stitch. It's gonna stitch this little line with a tick mark. Um, that's, that's good, okay? All right. There we go. This is what I want you to see. Take a closer look at that. Okay. Do you see that bottom line with the tick mark? Yeah, that's that's important when you come to this step. Okay, so um, you'll want to do that. And then I want you to look at page seven in your instructions. This is with, um, it says hooping instructions. Let's take a closer look at that. And it will tell you here we go, hooping instructions. This is on page seven. It will tell you to fold your fabric in half so that you can find a center point. And it will tell you to fold up one inch along the bottom, okay? So you're going to do that just with this normal piece of fabric, just, just like it says. So I would fold this in half, right sides together so that I could find my center. Okay, and then I'm going to fold it up one inch, which I'm just going to eyeball it here, but because I don't have my ruler, but let's just say that's one inch and find that. And so what you do, let's go ahead and go to this overhead. It's, uh, it's oh, it's not working. It's okay, not no problem. We'll try it this way. <laughs> okay. So what I did, <laughs> of all times, <laughs> okay, so that tick mark is where our center fold is going to be. This is going to be a little rough to show you. Let's see. This is folded in half, right? So I'm going to put my fold at that tick mark, and then I'm going to line up this bottom fold that was folded up one inch right along that line. And once I've done that... <laughs> I don't know how that looks. There we go. Yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> Once you do that, then you're in the right position and you, you won't have to shift anything down. Okay. What that one inch does is it gives you, um, it just moves everything so that um, it, it will look like it, it's been stitched on the bottom. All right, so um, just follow the instructions. You would tape this in place um, as outlined again, Direction step or page 14, we're looking at steps one and two. That's what I just showed. You would tape it in place and then you would take it to your machine and you would just do the applique house right on top, just like you normally would. All right. I hope that helps. All right. <laughs> Connie says, I have a bunch of table runners that need to be quilted. Lots of practice. Yeah. Um, you know, if you could see my closet right now in my sewing room full of uh, UFOs, it's mostly because they haven't been quilted yet. And now I'm excited I can use clear boot tiles and get it all done. Right. All right. Uh, any other questions before we leave? I, I wanted to make sure that, um, you know, for that first hour, we, we try to keep, we're going to try to keep these to an hour ish. I like to say, uh, but for that first hour, hopefully you learned like the overall picture of how this is done. If you have 
you know, a, a larger hoop. But even if you don't have that largest hoop, I wanted you to be able to see how to do it with clear blue tiles in the second half. So hopefully uh, that worked out for you. Okay. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Uh, just looking real quick here. What I'll do too is I'll go back through the comments uh, a little bit later today and tomorrow and try to answer what I can through the comments as well because I know I've missed uh, um, a lot of things. Okay. Lisa, she says, what is the difference between uh, the clear blue tiles and block by block? Lisa, real quick, um, block by block will have steps for um batting and placement lines for that batting because you don't want batting in the seams look here we go here's a better image okay i labeled it up here block by block and you see there's the the two outer lines in this case i they're orange um and then I filled in this gap where those two, what's in between those two lines. Um, this is what we would call block by block because it takes out, it's that you do one block at a time and it eliminates the batting between your seams. But then a clear blue tiles file might look exact, almost exactly the same, but look what's missing. You don't have the outer orange squares. OK, it's just going to be an all over design so that when you go to put one clear blue tile next to the next clear blue tile next to the next one, it all looks like it's um, seamless. It just flows together. So hopefully that helps answer your question, Lisa. OK. <laughs> Sharon says, I centered designs combined for first three blocks, so I guess I have to finish the other three and try to compensate for snow, exercise my brain, I guess. Hey, Sharon, that's okay. That's okay. There is no, you know, right or wrong reason and uh, way to do this. If you've got, you know, your, your house is just a little bit up further above the snow, then, you know, you could add maybe um, a button or you could add maybe some extra glitter. Ooh, you could do some extra snow drifts. All right. Grab some extra white glitter and just add it on top and you will be just fine. No problem at all. All right. Okay, Kathy says, thank you. Going to try quilting my table runner today. Oh, I'm so happy for you. In fact, on maybe what you're talking about too, uh, Kathy, is that you um, are quilting one of the table runners in the Clear Blue Tiles books. This table runner, if you've seen it posted on social media, this is where it's coming from. You get to learn how to piece those blocks in the hoop, the house blocks, the tree blocks, um, can we get a close up on that? And then not only do you piece those in the hoop, but then you can also use the clear blue tiles to quilt them in the hoop as well. There we go. Aren't those fun? So enjoy that process. Oh, that's going to be fun. As I mentioned earlier, too, let me show you the back of this. When I mentioned that clear blue tiles really is easy and there's basically three steps to it. I said, place it, let's go up here, right here. There we go. We place our tile down where we want it, our quilting to go. We mark the tile and then we quilt it. Simple, simple, simple. Okay, there you go. All right. Um, any other questions? I think we're probably okay for now. Okay, what? size hoops is the expansion set for um those are for are going to be for like your eight by 12 size and nine by 14 size hoops that's what those ones are for okay all right everyone thank you for joining me today for our lunch hour so long um again you know refer to to this video in the future when you have a similar technique needed uh for dropping a block down um once you do what I just showed you, you can do this whole thing 
with no problems at all. On Wednesday, I will again show you how to do the lamppost with the fringe wreaths. I'll give you some tips for that. We'll talk about that Christmas tree. We'll talk about um, how to get your lights in, all kinds of things like that. So join me Wednesday at noon mountain time uh, for that. And then we, I will see you again finally on Friday where we will go over putting the whole thing together, how to do your quilting in the hoop for the border blocks, the sashing and the outer border and how to uh, get that drift of snow looking so good on there as well. All right. Again, thank you for joining me. If I haven't answered your question live, then I will certainly go back and try to answer through the comments. Uh, please join us on the Kimber Bell Facebook page, as well as um, we have a Kimber Bellas and Fellas Facebook page, which is a fun private group for sharing your projects and on the Kimber Bell YouTube channel, um, as well as Instagram. So we're in lots of different places. We hope to see you there. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye-bye.